second half as perhaps we were hoping they might, but those two still the top two in the group and looking odds on to progress to the semi-finals next week. It didn't really go the way we'd <laughs> hoped it would. You're laughing. That's kind of obvious it didn't really. They just well, carried on doing I, what they were doing. Jackie, I quite enjoyed it. I don't know about Lee. I, I thought, no, he didn't. No, I thought it was the best game tactically <laughs> and technically we've seen. You know, with two teams having a go at each other. I think Chile controlled the first half and were a better side. Germany came out. They couldn't get their pressing going. And you give the Germans a little bit of space, they'll use it. So there wasn't so much you know, chances created. But the actual game of two teams, technically and tactically, I think that's sort of the best game we've seen for me. And I think you'll see them two in the semi-final. Do you agree, Lee? Yeah, I don't like agreeing with Glenn normally, because it's, you know, it's good TV <laughs> if we don't. But, yeah, it's about right. I think uh, it was two halves, different football. One was pressing. Second half, they found it more difficult. I think Germany uh, looked the more comfortable in the second half. But it just lacked that goal action from either end that makes if they have had the goal and action at the other end at either end it would have been a tactical good game and also exciting game Sanchez. but for me that's that's the part i don't like to see chilean players trying to get him sent off and uh i think there's a rule there that we can change i really do reverse the free kick <laughs> or the goal or whatever but uh, that's a different story you can see he's got options but he's just gone for the difficult one he's got to curl that round if he just bends that round Round Vidal, he's OK. He tries to play a straight ball, and uh, it's a great finish in the sense that within the blink of an eye, they're in behind. The last person you want to be going in one-on-one -on -one with a keeper really is Sanchez, and he screws it a little bit, doesn't he? Miskicks it, but no goalkeeper, as I said at half-time, in the world is going to read that. His first touch is great, because yeah. it's going away, and then all of a sudden his first touch, he takes it direct to the goal, like cuts out a defender, mm. getting across him, and... But any, any part of the body is good enough and the end of his toe, mm. left foot. Yeah, you wonder whether finish. the defender might have been leaning in and putting him off to make him do that, but the replay showed not really. No, but I think going back to the, going back to the, um, the challenge, the, and you don't like to see players getting around the referee. Mm. With this far, you're going to get more and more of that because every goal that goes in, if, certainly if I, I was just thinking about it last night, if I'm a player, if I'm a defender now, Every goal I concede, whether you like it or not, if I was still playing now, I'd go to the referee. Do you see the handball? Do you see the push? Mm. I'd be putting doubt in his mind just because I'm competitive and I don't want to lose. So I think you're going to get, for instance... But what's the point about if there wasn't one? If, if there wasn't no, an but any sort No, of, but any sort of slight indication yeah, but... there's a foul or something, they're going to go to the referee. He's got the power to reverse the free kick and give a free kick the other mm. way. That would stop that instantly, absolutely instantly. No it's... one would go and do that. He's Ever again, or go to a referee. great working with Glenn because he's, he's changed about five rules tonight, all good ones as well. <laughs> he's got five great ideas we talked about in the end. And the brilliant, I think you should be chairman of, I'm gonna be a of rule changer. At least the point is, they did have a point because he did, they did take out his teammate's ankle and he could have broken it's it and he didn't get sent card. off. Yeah. So it's not like they're, they're just saying it for the sake no. of it. They did have a good point if on that, this. Occasion. If that was on the halfway line and the ball was still in play, he would have sent that player off, no doubt about that. The fact that it goes into the goal shouldn't make any difference. This is a horrific tackle. Yeah. He could have broke his leg, broke That's his That's why ankle. they were complaining, though, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, again, I come back to it. We, we're learning from other sports that are doing this. If that's a rugby player, a rugby game, there's no way that they would even go anywhere near the referee no. to make a decision for him. And that's what we've got to try and bring mm -hmm. in in yeah. football. Uh, laws that are not going to change it radically, but uh, give the referee the power to actually convert the free kick or whatever and it, you'll stop it instantly you wouldn't see any player going towards a referee well they're not supposed to surround him and do that but they, they do then they get away with him and if, if more cards were dished out and they'd stop I, but I, I mean in terms yeah, of the we I, don't want to dish cards I, out mm. then they're the dishing cards out left right the players and won't stop otherwise you have to they? hurt them with the ball mm. honestly if you hurt a professional footballer with the ball so you, extra 10 yards whatever it may be they'll it will finish it straight away instead of yellow cards i'm voting huddle I'm definitely <laughs> Team Hot. So much space for them as a result. Yeah, and we see they, they did press on the left-hand side and Chan's got so much space now, and that's the way to beat the press. Either pass it through it or hit it over the top. And once he gets in this position, he just feeds the ball in and Isla just stops his tracking mm -hmm. back. And once you stop, there's a full-back, the ball inside, and it's a brilliant, brilliant crossing. And Stiddle's really... Look how he wraps his foot round the edge of it. We talked about it before, yeah. didn't we, Glenn? Yeah, he Technique worked really look. hard to get round it, didn't he? Because Chile had been pressing well, so what should mm. they have done differently there to prevent that? Well, I think that's the 42nd minute. And fatigue was just... I think Ian said it on, uh, on, on commentary. It's a time when sometimes... And, I, you know, you've got experienced players. They're the experienced side. 
Somebody there has got to say, hang on a minute, it's nearly half time. We've pressed really well, but now let's just drop behind the ball, last five minutes, make ourselves compact. And they've got the ability <coughs> also with the pace of Vargas and, uh, and Sanchez to hit people on the break with pace. So you then play slightly different for 10 minutes. And then second half, you get your breather, half time, you go pressing again. They never did it second so, half. Sometimes, they? Glenn, the reverse press as well, which we used to do at Arsenal, if you're tired and you just say to your mates, right, we press the space behind us into mm. the back four so they haven't got any space that way. And then when you get your breath back, then you can press in front of you again. Mm. OK. Well, after the break, we'll have highlights. This afternoon, Cameroon faced Australia in the same group, with both sides looking to keep alive their Confederations Cup campaigns. That's beautifully taken by Zambo and Guisa. Australia caught cold in stoppage time at the end of the first half. The defenders ask somebody to clip the ball into an area. That's exactly what happens. Just takes a chance. That's a very, very good goal, and I think a deserved lead. Cameroon in again. Basagog, Abubakar! As I'm buying Guisa, it was who actually steps over. He probably thought it was going in. Space for Gersbach. And Mabuka dived in. And here comes a lifeline. Although we are going to go upstairs. He got a piece of the ball, got but went through the, the man to get it. Went there. through the player to get it. Exactly, John. Well, the decision stands. So here's Mark Milligan. And he's located the corner and put his side back on terms. Brilliant. New Premier League goalkeeper with Brighton, Matthew Ryan, not having a great game this afternoon. But talking of the Premier League, we saw a few Premier League players this evening, didn't we, with um, Mustafi mm. having not such a great game and Sanchez uh, scoring mm. for Chile tonight. But from an Arsenal perspective, they finished 10 points off the top last year. They finished mm. 18 points off the top this year. What do they need to do this summer? Well, I think they're priority, which has been well documented uh, as far as Arsene Wenger was concerned, was to sort his future out. That seems to be sorted. And then the next priority is Ozil and Sanchez signing new deals. If that's going to happen, then I think that makes the club more stable from that point of view. There'll be a problem with the amount of money they've got to pay them. There's always a wage structure at Arsenal. Can they afford the new wages? Mm. And I think from I think Arsenal's already said at the end of last season that they don't need that much as far as signings concerned. Which, you know, that's an interesting way to look at it because I think the way the squad is right now, I think there's certainly areas. I think centre back with the new three-man system, that's an area they need to strengthen. Whether mm. Mustafa is the answer, I'm not so sure. That uh, means and no. central yeah. midfield player, you know, a holding central midfield player that is it a standard for me that will do that job and they haven't got one of them in the club at the moment. Because they've spent 60 me, plus million on Mustafi and Shaka yeah, and they haven't particularly for, worked out. For me it's not about who they bring in, I think they've got a really good side. It will be right up there again, challenging. Every player was on it that day, off the ball and on the ball. And that's what Arsenal haven't had. They've got good players, they've got very good players still there. And if they keep this squad, they might add to it. I don't think personally they have to add that much. It's an attitude change. If they all play like they did there for the manager that day, they were excellent against Chelsea and they caught Chelsea on the hop. They, Chelsea didn't know what hit them but, for a long period of the game. The, there's more things that take that go... I agree. Good players doing the, doing the right thing consistently is the missing thing. They go, they go, they go missing. There's, there's parts of that team go missing. The majority of it without the ball. So it's all right saying, mm. yeah, they're good players to do that. But it, you, you can't just change your attitude like that. Mm. The play, it's ingrained in players how they behave over a season. And there's too many times that certain players have gone missing and the attitude to winning the ball back hasn't no, good enough. And that, for me, comes from the set-up from Monday to Friday. It's been there for years, not winning the ball But it makes you wonder back. what's going to change, though. Yeah. For years they've been there. Well, Defensively, they're like a ship without a rudder. They've got no way of pressing the ball. Like we saw 
Chile pressed the first half, or other teams, even yeah. Tottenham, the way they've pressed over with, with the players that they've got. They've got no... You can't... You, you look at them and say they're off the cuff. They're going to play with the ball. When they haven't got the ball, there's no system there where they're going together or they're making them channel down one side of the pitch or they're letting a, a vulnerable player have the ball at the back and working off him. All them things Arsenal don't do. And, and they pay the price sometimes. Mm, I just wonder... Any manager coming into the Premier League, it'll be a test. It'll be a test to get to new, n know the players at that club. Um, his track record has been is brilliant as a player. And as you said at Ajax, Expo, mm. it's going to be an eye-opener for him, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I think uh, he'll do what most of the foreign players, uh, managers will do, bring foreign players in. Might be Dutch. I just think he's got to watch himself. You know, Palace have got to watch that if, he, if it's a long-term thing, if he brings too much technical side to the game, they need to survive. OK, thanks, both of you. It's been fun tonight. Tomorrow sees more action from Royal Ascot. The opening show will mark your card at 10am on ITV4, while the racing itself gets underway from 1.30 on ITV. And on Saturday, Group A of the Confederations Cup reaches its climax with New Zealand against Portugal on ITV4 from 3.30. So it finished honours even in Kazan tonight. Both sides should progress to the semi-finals, you'd think, but they still have a little bit more work to do. From us all, good night.